Hey everybody, welcome back to the garage. So today I'm going to be installing the billet uh, intercooler manifold from Dedicated Motorsports. Um, there's an easy way and a hard way to put this on and we're gonna do it the hard way. So the main reason we're going to do it the hard way, um, let me just explain real quick, is technically you can pull out the screws from the old one and work this loose and pull it out of the lid and then put this one in and pop it in and put the screws in and you would think that you would be done. Uh, the problem with doing that is you can't replace the O-rings without taking the lid off because they're so far in there. Maybe you have a tool. I don't know. I don't have a tool that can reach far enough in there to replace the O-rings. So we're going to go ahead and take the lid off. It'll give me a chance to uh, make sure there's not a ton of oil sitting on top of the blower. And uh, that way we can replace the O-rings, put this in properly uh, so we know it's not going to leak water into the blower area. We're also going to be replacing... Um, this seal which seals this to the lid and uh, here's that part number and the part number for the o-rings you'll need two there's that part number let's go ahead and install so as you can see right here these are adapters from DMS that adapts the stock manifold to the 12 AN that came with the uh, the new intercooler reservoir that I got. Um, so these leak under boost. So there's 16 pounds of boost in here and the boost is getting past the O-ring inside on the manifold and forcing water out of here um, because it's really the only place it can go. Uh, 16 pounds isn't enough to blow lines off but it will get past the O-rings here. So that's the adapter. I've already emptied out the coolant, which was just water and water wetter. I don't think I'm gonna use that water wetter anymore. It seems to leave a sludge inside. And I really don't see how that can help with cooling. I'm gonna have to find a, uh, a flush for the system now. If you're not going to be in a cold environment and you're not running a, a chiller, there's no point in having uh, anything other than water in there, really. If you're running a chiller, obviously you don't want the water freezing, so yeah, you would want to run coolant uh, so it doesn't freeze. Now, in the back of the blower, there's a couple bolts that are really hard to get to. So according to the service manual, you would have to loosen the six bolts for the front cradle, the subframe. You'd have to loosen all six, take out the back two, and drop the subframe down in order to reach back here. And I've already made a provision back there for myself to get to the back bolts, so I don't have to do that. Um, would it be easier? It, it might be. Um, I just don't like doing that. So, um, I have some slots that are in the cowl. And, and those go right on top of the bolt. So I can just take them out from the top, uh, from underneath the cover here. But lowering the, uh, lowering the subframe, lowering that cradle, 
uh, isn't a big deal. It's a lot easier on a lift, which I have. Uh, but I'm not going to do that because I've already got this way. So I just need to take this stuff off. We're not going to bore you with that. Um, I've got it in other videos. So next time you see this, um, the lid will be off. So this is the intercooler, as you know. So this is where the boost is getting in. So the boost is getting in here, pressurizing this and pushing water out. Uh, could it be pushing water into the manifold? Uh, probably unlikely. Uh, it could. I don't see any signs of water. Uh, but it's getting out the other end for sure. So the last bolt I took out <laughs> came out with this black insert. Make sure you uh, have all those. That helps line up your uh, your bolt inside the uh, inside the lid. So that just popped out. And it's a little tight. I'll give you guys a torque specs on this when I go to put the new one in. Anyway, uh, yes, I did have it out. I had it out because I had to. Uh, I reinforced the brick. Take these O-rings off. Could you have got to those O-rings from that front hole? <laughs> Maybe. And if you dropped one in here, you'd probably uh, be having fun getting it out. So this thing's really dirty. I'm gonna flush this with brake cleaner being sure to avoid my sensors. I don't want to, I don't know if that'll mess up the sensors or not, but I really don't want brake cleaner on my sensors. I need another can. Good thing I buy them by the case. Uh, if you're looking for this, the part number is 12612467. Okay, well, we got the oil and stuff cleaned up out of the blower best we could. Uh, made sure that there wasn't any debris um, that fell into the ports. Uh, the only way to get it perfectly clean would be to pull it off, and I'm not going to do that. So see the black insert in there? It's missing out of this one. Those come in really handy because uh, when you put the lid back on, They'll hold the bolts without letting them fall all the way through. So you can put the bolts all the way around the lid and they'll hold the bolts there for you. So you can place the lid and not have to uh, fight them, especially in the back. We got this all cleaned off. Got the new seal. We're going to go ahead and install it there. Just taking a little bit of super lube and putting it on the uh, on this seal. Helps it so it doesn't stick when you go to disassemble it. I would suggest you buy seals from the dealer. They're at least a reputable parts house like gmparts.com. I suppose O'Reilly's or you know your local auto parts store would be okay. Believe it or not, there are there are counterfeiters out there that counterfeit stupid stuff like this and you're not getting original equipment it's gonna put a little bit of that on there there we go Take could put a little bit of that in there. So now we can take the manifold. It's going to go in this way. This is kind of the fun part. It's difficult to get pushed on. So 
though the holes are lining up. Well, I really don't want to use the screws to drive it on. I'd rather just push it on if I can. Because pulling it on with the screws is either going to strip the lid or it's going to break an ear off. Yeah, I'm not going to lie, this is uh, pretty tough to get on. There it goes. So it does, it does push on. Just got to get yourself some nice gloves so it doesn't bite into your hand. And just push straight in and it'll go. So they give you some new hardware. Kind of dress it up a little bit. Let's see what the book says about torque spec. Here's torque specs. So there is a torque sequence for the lid. You may want to pause this so you can check them all out. It says do not reuse gasket. First pass is 44 inch pounds, 5 newton meters. Second pass, 10 newton meters, 89 inch pounds. And if you took off the supercharger, that is the torque sequence and the torque spec, but we didn't do that. But we did change a manifold. And those fasteners torque to 89 inch pounds or 10 newton meters. That's a nice thing about newton meters is there is no inch and foot to get confused. And if you're concerned, you can run a thread chaser through your threads to clean up any junk. Would be a good idea. Don't use a tap. A tap is not the same thing as a thread chaser. You'll actually cut into the threads and possibly destroy them. Thread chaser uh, doesn't cut. It just cleans. Eighty nine inch pounds. These are also five millimeter hex. If you're uh, wanting to use those instead of OEM, I don't. I'm not sure. I'm not sure OEM would work uh, because it'd probably run into the side here. It might, but these are five millimeter. All right, got the gasket in. Make sure it's all indexed proper and all that. Put a little bit of that super lube grease on it just to make it so it doesn't stick. And I also put some of that. On the brick gasket there just along the top as you can see I've got the bolts hanging out of the back there makes it a little easier to install that way I'm not trying to uh, find the bolt holes yeah I can feel that grease on there that makes that nice it slides around just right.
using them fittings. You're using a steel wrench. Yeah, I know. Obviously, big wrench. Doesn't need to be torqued real tight. Fit leaks, you can tighten it up a little more. There it is. So that's it without the adapters. All plumbed in. All we need to do is fill the reservoir back up. So, well, I'm gonna try to figure out what's wrong with my catch can since it doesn't seem to be doing its job even though it's routed correctly. And uh, I guess we'll see you on the next video. Thanks for watching.